wiping over leather socks. One century after another, the Arabs kept traveling long distances in the desert, on journeys that were known as winter and summer journeys. They traveled to Sham and Yemen. During these journeys, they used to wear al-khuf, as well as normal socks, which they used to also wear when residing in any place. Al-khuf are worn on the foot and are made from leather. As for socks, they are usually made from cotton, etc. Islamic law has made it permissible to wipe over al-khuf and normal socks. This is because when Anas ibn Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, was asked concerning wiping over leather footwear, he said the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, used to wipe over them. But there are conditions that have to be met to be able to wipe over any socks. One condition is that both should be put on after being in a state of purity. al mughira may Allah be pleased with him, said, I was with the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, on a journey. Then I intended to remove his hoofs, meaning during his ablution. And he, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Leave them both, because I put them on in a state of purity, meaning after performing wudu. Then he wiped over them. Another condition is that the hoof and socks must cover both the feet and the ankles and they also must be made from pure materials. Also, both should be made from permissible material and not from anything forbidden such as silk for men. Another condition for wiping over socks or footwear is that it is only allowed for purifying from al-hadath al-asghar which means the lesser ritual impurity but not from al-hadath al-akbar which refers to the greater ritual impurity. As Safwan ibn Asal said, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, used to order us when we were traveling to wipe over our hoofs and not take them off for three nights in the event of defecating or urinating or sleeping, except when we had discharge due to a wet dream or sexual intercourse. These conditions depend on a prescribed time limit for wiping, a day and its night for a non-traveller, and three days and nights for a traveller. The evidence concerning this is the hadith from Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, saying, the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, made or allotted three days and nights for the traveller, and a day and a night for a non-traveller. The period in which we are allowed to wipe over the socks starts from the first wipe after one's wudu is invalidated. So when a person puts on socks while being in a state of purity and thereafter he becomes impure by defecating for example, he may wipe over the socks when performing wudu. This would be considered the first time he wiped after putting on the socks. From this time, the period of a day and a night, or 24 hours, should be counted. The upper part of the socks and or footwear is wiped over with wet hands. From the toes to the base of the shins in one wipe, the left and the right foot at the same time. The right hand wipes the right foot and the left hand wipes the left foot. One has to also avoid wiping the bottom of the feet and ankles. As Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, said, If the religion was based on reasoning, then the bottom of the foot would be more worthy to be wiped over than the top. However, I saw the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, wipe over the upper part of his hoofs. And once the socks or one of them are removed, 
the person cannot wipe over them again. But a Muslim should remove his socks to wash them and clean his feet if they have a bad smell, as such a smell harms one's Muslim brothers. Wiping over casts, bandages and band-aids. What Islam legislated for al-khuf and socks is also legislated for casts, bandages and band-aids. Casts are used to hold broken limbs in place and are made from gypsum and also sticks for splints or similar materials. Bandages are used to cover wounds, burns, etc. They are made from fabric or the like and are used for medical purposes. Band-aids are used to cover burns, cuts and wounds for medical reasons and are generally adhesive. It is permissible to wipe over all of these. The proof of this is in the hadith of Jabir. May Allah be pleased with him who said, We went on an expedition during which one of us was wounded on his head by a stone. Afterwards, this person had a wet dream and asked his companions, Do you find any concession or rukhsa for me to perform a tayammum? That is, instead of taking a complete bath, since I have a head injury. They replied, You are not permitted to perform tayammum because you are capable of using water. He then took a bath and died. When we met the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, the matter was reported to him and he said, They killed him. May Allah kill them. Why did they not ask when they were ignorant? For the cure of ignorance is asking questions. It was enough for him to perform tayammum or bind a bandage over the wound. The narrator, Musa, was doubtful. Then he should have wiped over this and bathed the rest of his body. It is not a condition that one should be in a state of purity before putting them on. Neither is there a prescribed time limit for wiping over them. As long as there is a need for them to be worn, it is permissible to wipe over them. The cast, splint or bandage must not transcend the place that needs care. But one should not wipe the parts of the body that are not covered by a cast. He must wash them. If one who is performing purification reaches the limb which is covered with any of these coverings, he should wash what is around them and wipe all the sides of the covering. But if some of the cast or bandage covers a part of the body that is not usually washed in order to become in a state of purity, the person does not need to wipe over it.